why was the universe 25 experiment so important for mankind? Let's talk about it. Ethologist John Calhoun has held a number of fascinating experiments since the 1960s and 70s. As an experiment, Calhoun invariably chose rodents, although the ultimate goal of the research was always to predict the future of human society. As a result of numerous experience on the rodent colonies, Calhoun had formulated a new term, behavioral sink, indicating the transition to a destructive and deviant behavior in terms of overpopulation and overcrowding. His research has acquired a certain fame in the 1960s as many people in the Western countries have experienced post-war baby boom. They then began to think about how overpopulation affected public institutions and for each person in particular. His most famous experiment that made us think about the future of the whole generation held in 1972 and in conjunction with the National Institute of Mental Health, the aim of the experiment, Universe 25, was to analyze the effect of population density on the behavioral patterns of the rodents. Calhoun built a haven for mice in the laboratory. He created a tank size of 2x2 two two meters and a height of half a meter, where mice could not get out. Inside the tank, he maintained a constant comfortable temperature for mice, plus 20 degrees Celsius. He then presented abundance of food and water and also created numerous nests for the females. Each week, the tank was cleaned and maintained in a constant state of cleanliness. All necessary safety measures had been taken, eliminates the appearance of predators in the tank or the occurrence of massive infections. The experimental mice were under the constant supervision of veterinarians, their health status constantly monitored. Food and water security was so thought out that 9,500 mice could eat at the same time without experiencing any discomfort, and 6,144 mice consumed water and without experiencing any problems. Space for mice was more than enough. The first problem of the lack of shelter can only occur when a population size grew to over 3,840 mice. However, such a large number of mice had not been in the tank. The maximum size of the population observed at the level was 2,200 mice. The experiment began with only four pairs of mice, one male, one female. They then began to multiply rapidly. This period of development Calhoun called Phase A, and Stage B began when the first mice was born. This is the stage of exponential growth of the population size in the tank under ideal conditions. The number of mice doubled every 55 days. But then starting with the 315th day of the experiment, the population growth rate had slowed down significantly. And now the number had doubled every 145 days, which marked the entry into the third phase, phase C. At this point in the tank, about 600 mice formed a hierarchy and some social life. There had become less physical space than before, and with only 600 mice. Patterns arose. There was a category of outcasts who were being driven to the center of the tank. They often became victims of aggression. To distinguish the outcasts, they were bitten by the nails. They had torn hair and traces of blood in the body. The lack of appropriate social roles had been caused by the fact that under ideal conditions, the tank gave the older mice longer lives and it didn't give room for the younger rodents. So often, aggression was aimed at a new generation of individuals born in the tank. After the expulsion of the males broke psychologically, they showed less aggression. They did not want to protect their pregnant females and perform any social roles, although they occasionally attacked other individuals that were considered rejected. Females who were preparing to give birth became more and more nervous as a result of the growth of the males being more passive. They became more vulnerable to random attacks. As a result, the females began to show aggression and often fight, protecting the offsprings. Females will often resort to killing their cubs and move to the top slot. Hermits became aggressive and refused to reproduce. As a result, the birth rate had dropped substantially and young mortality reached significant levels. Soon began the last stage of the existence of the project, Phase D, or the Phase of Death as it was called by John Calhoun. The symbol of the stage is the emergence of a new category of mice called the beautiful. These included males showing uncharacteristically kind behavior, refusing to fight and fight for females in territory. They showed no interest in mate and are prone to a passive lifestyle. Beautifuls only ate, drank, slept, and purified their skins, avoiding conflicts and the implementation of any social functions. They received this name unlike most of the other inhabitants of the tank, they had no trace of hard-fought battles, scars, and tear wool. Their narcissism had become legendary. Also, the researchers were stunned by the lack of desire for the beautifuls to actually mate with anyone. Female beautifuls would refuse to breed and escape into the upper tank nest to become the majority. The average age of the mice in the last stage of the existence was 776 days, 200 days exceeding the upper limit of reproductive age. The number of pregnancies was low and soon was zero. Endangered mice started showing homosexual behavior and aggression in excess of vital resources. Cannibalism flourished even though there was a lot of food to go around. Females refused to bring up their cubs, sometimes even killing them and eating them. Calhoun was asked about the reasons for the emergence of a group of rodents called the beautiful. He drew a direct analogy with humans, explaining that the key human trait 
His natural destiny is to live in the conditions of pressure, tension, and stress. Mice give up the struggle choosing an unbearable lightness of being turned into autistic handsomes, capable of only the most basic functions, the absorption of food and sleep, and in principle became not capable of such powerful and complex behavior. Calhoun draws parallels with many modern men, capable of only the most routine, everyday activities in order to maintain the physiological life, but the spirit was already dead. What was expressed in Universe 25 was the ability to overcome and most importantly to be under pressure. He concluded that this is what would happen to mankind if the population continued to flourish and society reached that perfect state. So what are your thoughts? Should the problem of human overpopulation be a priority for us now? If you like this video, hit that like button, consider subscribing. I talk about money and everything related to it so don't miss out. And as always, take care of your money.